Hello, thank you for watching. This is part of a video series where I talk to other digital professionals about the topics and issues that we come across on our day-to-day -day work. Today it's all about project and product management, which are being highlighted at recent conferences. And this is because the importance of both in our uh, daily work is actually increasing. Uh, it has been it has been quite important in other sectors, such as engineering, uh, for example, architecture, etc., etc., but not so much in digital. However, the wonders of both product and project management in our day-to-day -day work are incredible. And so, for this reason, we've got here Gus Pelogia, who is a SEO product manager, and he is going to talk about a bit more uh, about about the differences between project and product, and how he applies that to his daily work. Hello, Gus. How are you? Hi everyone, uh, Monte. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, glad to be here. No, thank you so much for for making the time to come into the show. So, if you could explain a little bit more about what you do and uh, what is project management and product management, so that the audience actually understands what is the difference, uh, what the differences are. Yeah. So, I'm Gus Pelogia. I'm a product SEO manager at Indeed, and on my day to day, I basically run different types of initiatives that will be beneficial for SEO and beneficial for users or job seekers, uh, as we call uh, people that come to our website. And I think for me, the, the main difference between project and product is the actual execution of it. So if you are a project manager, you can just uh, take it, uh, an idea that someone already has, and you're responsible for running that. You have, let's say, a go-to-market campaign that will have some PR, some SEO, landing pages, uh, webinars, it will have a lot of different things. And as the project manager, you kind of oversee, make sure that all the operation is going well. And if you know one thing is delayed, it might delay other things from other teams. So you, you need to make sure that things are running smoothly and you're kind of chasing people uh, to, to a certain extent, you don't necessarily need to be part of the, the actual idea or know that well the product uh, or the, you know, the thing that is being released, but you need to be really good into organizing all of this and making sure that the people that are on the trenches are actually delivering those things on, on time. And as a product manager, you are uh, running a specific uh, initiative. So let's say if you are doing uh, something with internal linking, you have to come up with the idea, with the hypothesis, uh, and plan what are the teams that will be involved and kind of pitch the whole idea. So it's on you, uh, the selling uh, and getting the buy-in from, from other people and going all the way to reporting and make sure that this is actually doing something for the business. And I only once worked with someone that it was just a project manager and that person knew very little about SEO or the other things we were doing, but she was really good into connecting all of these things that sometimes people would go and work alone, right? You go with your uh, articles and you're just going on your own direction and she will look at um, a webinar that another team is doing. Hey those pages should promote the webinar or they should have things, uh, you know, find ways to, to connect all of these different things. So it, it is a very different job now uh, yeah. on my day to day. I will pitch different ideas. So let's say I won't have more than three or four things running at the same time because each project will take quite a few months and or each initiative will take quite a few months and yeah. you you have to run uh, the whole idea and it's your responsibility also to make sure that the results are coming in on the other end. And so you, I think I also end up doing the project manage management of, of, this, uh, of these ideas. If tickets are written on, on a way that engineers can understand, if they are picking up on time, reporting to 
uh, leadership and to my manager that things are moving on a good pace or if they're not moving on a good pace, how can we fix it and, and things like that. Yeah, it's a question of resources. In fact, uh, one of the uh, main uh, main aspects of projects and also product management as well is uh, having the right resources so uh, so that you can actually do the, your job and you can deliver on your objectives and deliver all the bits and pieces that you need to um, you need to apply to your products as well. Um, so uh, sometimes you just have to prioritize. It's a question of prioritizing, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think now that I, I run products uh, or then run initiatives and I'm sitting with the engineers on daily stand-ups and on our sprint planning, I have a very different view of what we are doing and why maybe a few things don't get done. Mm -hmm. And I actually became that person that will look at the tickets and say, does this really make sense to make it now? Do I really need to improve page speed a little bit more or can I use this time to release something new? And so you kind of learn how much space do you have on the sprint. We work in sprint, so every two weeks mm -hmm. new tests are assigned. And sometimes I, I see a lot of things that are, yeah, this is not going to make a good impact. This is a very nice to have. It's very shiny for SEO, mm -hmm. but this will not bring us more uh, traffic. This will not bring more um, job seekers that will apply for jobs. So you kind of start deprioritizing things that uh, will not have the same impact, especially because um, every initiative that I run after a few months that things are, are live, I have to report on the impact and mm -hmm. I have to find ways to drill down the impact of the specific initiative, not just saying traffic went up, everybody's happy, or more people are applying for jobs, uh, everyone is happy. Uh, I need really to prove the impact of this specific thing that I did. Otherwise, um, I won't really get the credit for it. And how do you prove the impact of everything that you are doing? Or does it depend on what you are actually doing? Um, so my go-to resource for this, which is actually going to be uh, one of the things that I'm going to touch on my uh, talk in, ah. in Brighton SEO in a few weeks, is um, how we measure those things. And we use um, a thing called causal impact analysis that I will try to explain, even though I'm not a, a mathematician or a data scientist that will know the details of it. So, But this is my basic version uh, explaining to other SEOs, right? So you will, let's say if you're doing a test on page titles, you are changing the year of the page title or you're adding or removing the brand or adding prices on, on page titles because you have a hypothesis that this will improve your CTR and will then improve your sales. You will have a, a test group, which will be a group of pages that will apply this change and you're gonna have a control group, which is a similar group of pages that had no changes at all. And what the causal impact will, will do for you is to look historically six months to a year, how well, how, how were those two groups moving together? So the control group should make the same traffic or the same conversion movements, depending on what you're comparing, than the test group. They don't need to have exact the same traffic, but they need to go up and down at the same time for a long period. So you know that uh, those two groups are equivalent. And once the change is actually made on the ideal world, you should see one group stay in the same place and the other group, the one that you made the change is going up. And that difference is the impact that your initiative alone made on, on this initiative. And this is actually quite interesting for all SEOs who are, who are always struggling with proving that what, whatever we did was actually good for the company and, um, and good for the business, generally speaking, or, or at least for the uh, marketing initiative that we were trying to run. Um, there are other ways to to actually do that. And I think it's, um, it's to do with the complexity of the um, initiative that you are running or the complexity of the uh, organization you are working for. For example, cost versus effort can be very useful um, sometimes in, in the smaller situations. And that's my experience in the smaller organizations or the smaller initiatives or how well we are um, actually um, 
on track, uh, whether we are on track or not, to deliver on um, on time and in budget to budget. That's at least at least as my experience. But um, I think we have jumped a little bit ahead of us. Uh, I wanted to talk about validation because uh, sometimes project managers do not validate uh, ideas. Sometimes those ideas have already been vali validated. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean that they are rightly validated or not. It's just that somebody else has already done it. So we are hard to make sure that those ideas are implemented um, or those objectives have been um, have been achieved. What is what is your experience working at Indeed or any other companies on this? Yeah, I think you know validating is. It's very important. Uh, so I try to do uh, what we call an MVP, a minimum viable product. Mm -hmm. And before that, you might just do a test, right? So if you want to know, uh, like we all know that internal links are important for SEO. If you put more links to a page, you're going to pass more link value to that page. And in consequence, the page should rank better. But you don't know what is the size of the impact or how many internal links do you need to actually get some some uh, impact. So you could do this on a small scale and say, okay, I'm gonna add uh, those links to the top menu and I wanna compare them versus, uh, you can compare them versus the pages versus the pages themselves, or uh -huh. you can compare the website average growth versus those pages. Or, you know, you, you might look for different ways to, to measure this. These are just uh, a few of them. And if you see that there was actually an impact, then you can say, okay, can we expand this without destroying the user experience, right? You don't want to put a hundred mm -hmm. links on a menu, but you might realize that you should, I don't know, redo the menu because there are other pages that are more important, or maybe, um, you know, there'll be different ways that you can work with UX to, to build something that, that fits both worlds, but for me, doing MVPs, it's always very important to understand what, what we are doing, or mm -hmm. even if you can do it at a smaller scale, like a, a menu change, or if you all, before you develop something for implement structured data in every single page, you maybe want to do on a smaller scale and see if those pages start performing better. And by mm -hmm. performing better, it could be more traffic, could be a better CTR, mm -hmm. it could be you know, actions that people are taking on the page. There are various, various different things that people could do and that could be your, your goal. But I think mm -hmm. having an hypothesis of what do you expect to happen yeah. is the first step. So you're, so you're able to measure what's going to happen. Are these ideas uh, something that you are given normally, or is this something that you actually are um, able to to, to kind of uh, guess or to kind of um, think about and then suggest uh, via an MVP? Yeah, so usually, actually, they might come from different angles. There are things that I think myself that would be nice to have. And then I hear from another SEO that they also have this idea, or I might hear from a different team that they're doing something similar, or they are... Uh, right now I'm having a, a case that there's a, a different team that is classifying pages into specific uh, occupations. And there was a project that I want to take on as well. It's an initiative that is very interesting for things that I want to do. Uh -huh. And just by talking, people realize that there's a different team doing that same thing for a different mm. reason. So I can just tag along and use the work that is being done. And, you know, instead of trying to pitch for something to get done now, if they say, we're going to start this in two months, I say, okay, I can't wait two months. Let me do other things before. Mm -hmm. But the discovery process is is very important. Uh, that's how I get to write what I call the PRDs, the product requirement documents. Yeah. So those are kind of large uh, Word documents, five, six pages, where I explain the background of idea uh, what to expect to, to get from it, what are the teams involved, the tasks that have to be done. And throughout this process, sometimes I realize that what I want to do doesn't actually have a strong hypothesis. And I just stop the, the idea there before I get uh, to think, oh, this is super cool. And 
just start developing my head, when you actually put the, the thoughts on paper, mm -hmm. you might realize, mm, this seems too complicated to actually get us somewhere. It might lead us somewhere, but mm -hmm. it's getting too complicated for the time that we have or for the results we want to get by the end of the quarter or by the end of the semester. Mm. So sometimes at this stage, you already realize this is not a good idea for now. Yeah, and this is where experience um, uh, comes into play because as a project manager or product manager, you have to know where exactly your idea can fit in, whether it is useful, whether it is not. And sometimes it is useful. So take, for example, the um, internal linking which a website, any website needs very badly, normally. Uh, sometimes it's just complicated to include those links, so those internal links, for whichever other reason. Um, normally to do with uh, different teams or the complexity inside a company. And sometimes we just have to call those ideas off and uh, focus on something else. Uh, it's, it's, it is as simple as that. So um, what about um, teams? <laughs> in your work, do you manage a team or do you have a, a matrix type of organization where you have to um, involve people uh, from other teams who are not directly responsible uh, to you? Yeah, so I don't manage a team. I'm part of a team and uh, my manager, Sam, is, is the one who, who oversees uh, everything that we're doing. But uh, I do see it within the, the product team, the product and engineering team. Uh, so I'm sitting there on daily standups. I'm part of our uh, sprint planning and other, you know, triage and all the, these different conversations that we have. And so I'm technically part of one team, but I live my day to day uh, in another team, which is very interesting because <laughs> this makes me understand what are the things that are doing as well? So, uh, you know, I know what are other initiatives they have to take on. Um, maybe sometimes we have platform improvements and things that uh, have to be done. And I know being aware of this and then being aware of the things that are running in, in SEO, uh, you can find that balance. So I usually go to sprint planning already knowing these are how many tickets I can put in. And mm -hmm. that helps me to plan how I'm going to deliver things as well. So if uh, in one sprint I have a little less space, I would rather put something that is fixing a bug or something mm -hmm. that uh, I just need that final ticket to release something because then I can start collecting data and improving results a little earlier versus if I'm running, if I were to run, I don't know, five, six projects at the same time, everything is moving a little bit slowly, but nothing's really complete. And at the end of the day, if you, after, I don't know, three, six months, you have everything just releasing at the same time, mm -hmm. it's not really good either because it gets more complicated to measure. And, yeah. you know, people have been waiting for so long and then suddenly you just come with a wave of everything is out and you can't really measure properly and, and tweak pro uh, properly if, if, if you're juggling so many things at the same time. And then if some of those aspects actually uh... Are, are failing for whichever reason, then it's much more complicated to actually to actually see that too. Uh, so it's much better to deliver uh, at different times so that you can at least measure the impact and uh, concentrate as well on their um, uh, on their delivery on their on their um, on their rollout as well. Because uh, if you have like five or six things at the same time. Uh, just rolling them out at the same time can actually cause um, havoc. <laughs> that's that's my that's my experience. Yeah, if everything is a priority, nothing's a priority, right? Uh, no, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Sometimes we have to prioritize quite quite heavily, and that means that things that are super important and that are going, going to cause a, an impact uh, need to be deprioritized. <laughs> Yeah, um, another thing to add to, to this is I find it very enjoyable when you actually release something and enjoying that moment, uh, you know, it, it helps me also to have more ideas for um, a V2 or to actually spot things that are not perfect yet. So 
having one thing being released at the time and only having a few or a semester is actually a lot better than trying to do everything at the same time. Yeah, I, I and I believe that is the best thing about project and product management, the fact that you actually work towards that objective and then that objective gets done. Um, that aspect, that functionality gets released. That is absolutely, absolutely amazing. Uh, it's, it's, that, it's, it's a great feeling, particularly later on doesn't fail <laughs> and everybody's happy and it does produce the, um, the expected results because sometimes uh, there, there are things that we can't just control. There are variables that we can't control. We think everything is going to be brilliant according to our analysis, according to our experience, but then there are things that are beyond our own control. Uh, let's say an algorithm update, uh, which doesn't really produce uh, that much of a chaos a lot of the times, but it can affect, yeah? Um, so, yeah. Okay, great. Lucas, could you explain to our audience what kind of challenges do you run into on a day-to-day -day basis? This is particular for those uh, people who may want to start uh, being a project manager or a product manager or have just uh, recently started. Yeah, I think proving the impact of specific initiatives is the most challenging part. It's also the most exciting part hmm. because you spend, let's say, three months, four months working on something. You write your PRD, you talk with the engineer, you talk with the UX, you talk with the other uh, PMs, and you get everyone on board so they know what's going to happen. And the developing of those things, they, they take months. Uh, most of the work at that point will sit with the engineers. I kind of come up with an idea and a hypothesis and plan the results we can get from it. Mm -hmm. And, but the actual heavy lifting to develop a lot of those things are done by, by other teams. Right. So I think having that proper communication skills with them, understanding yeah. how things are moving, how you can support uh, their work. So things can be delivered on time and the way you, you envision it uh, is one thing, mm -hmm. but then after something's released, you're going to wait another a month or two, three months to say, okay, um, did we get the results we expected from it? And if we apply this result to a whole country or to the whole website, mm -hmm. how much can we get from it? And sometimes I do initiatives that uh, are performing well, but are just not performing as good as they should be. So you have to keep tweaking and looking for different ways to make something even better. And mm -hmm. at some point you might realize, okay, this is taking too much time. It's not really getting where we need to go. Let's just stop this one because it's going to cost us more to keep trying to develop versus something that is already more clear that we are more sure that we have a higher confidence that will actually bring results. So. Proving impact, uh, I think, is the, the biggest challenge. What about having to run around different professionals, different departments? Uh, is, is this not a, a challenge for you at your current uh, job or previous jobs? I think working in an agency, that was more of a challenge before because you will also end up working with different agencies. So let's say if you have a a client that is developing a new website that that company is probably hiring another uh, web dev company to to do that work and on mm. on the best of the worlds you have the the devs and the seo team even though they are from different agencies working together to deliver a very good product not yeah. uh, not an afterthought uh, like seo often is and at that moment, it might become a little bit more challenging to convince them that certain things should be done in a certain way because they also have their methodologies and the client is in the middle uh, trying to, to jiggle all of this. Yeah. In-house, I find it easier um, to, to get that buy-in and to get those ideas uh, across the board because you are all working over the same shared resource and the, the same shared goals. Mm -hmm. And... So yeah, uh, for me, there, there's a lesson that I have from my first few weeks at Indeed that 
the first few weeks that I took this role as a product manager and someone from a different team uh, came to talk to me and I wasn't really sure why she was so excited and throwing all, all these ideas at me. <laughs> she was actually, you know, building that relationship from the very early stages. I was only there on this role for two weeks and you're going to be bombarded with new people and process and, and things to do. So the earliest that someone gets in front of you, the higher is the chance that they'll get to know you, they understand how you work and you're going to have a chance to work close with them. Mm. And we end up working close for, for quite some time. And often we would have a, a fortnightly one-on-one and sometimes we didn't really have an agenda, but mm -hmm. she would say, oh, I'm working on this, on this. And I would realize, oh, I can use this for SEO. Can we include this uh, extra bit in here? Or, you know, like sometimes someone else is leading a project and you can just uh, jump on it and get a, get some SEO bits as part of what they're doing. And then you kind of just make the whole initiative much better. It will cost less to do because someone already sold the idea. It was already bought in by different stakeholders. So okay. just injecting a, an extra piece in there, it becomes much easier than saying, let's do this from scratch. Collaboration is a big thing, isn't it? Um, in any type of organization of company, if there are any other teams that are already running similar projects or projects where you are actually um, able to actually get in and say, well, uh, from my SEO perspective, we can do X, Y, Z. That is great because uh, this is how things run at this moment in time. I think collaboration is one of the uh, biggest aspects uh, we need to take into account um, from now because uh, there are so many specialisms and sometimes you might be able to run a project on your own or uh, be being able to publish functionality on your project, on your product um, at any given time. But sometimes you may need other people. So if you collaborate and you make yourself available from the start, it's easier for other people to uh, to understand that they can talk to you, uh, that your expertise that your work can actually benefit what they do, et cetera, et cetera. It makes things easier for everybody from any point of view, right? Big time, big time. And I would add to this, uh, find ways to be proactive on, on different things as well, right? So yeah. I, I work with someone on a different team that every initiative that I, that I bring in, uh, she does it really well. She takes on board and she puts her team to to work together. There, there's a big benefit for them, but she could just say, "Oh, I'm we are ready to be with other things." But mm. that this has never happened. So when I see an opportunity to to take something that maybe she doesn't want to do, or maybe it will take too long for her to figure it out, but it's a process that I already have in mind, I just jump in and say, hey, "I can do this for you," because. You are doing so many things uh, for me. The projects that we do, the big things that we do, just run so smoothly that I'm happy to take this this little thing for you. It's not a burden for me. It, maybe it would be a burden for the person, but for me, is a short, very short project. Uh, you know, half an hour of a, of a day, and and you know, the person is also happy that you came in and took a burden out of their shoulders. So mm -hmm. I, I try to be helpful at any moment. And sometimes there are things that are a little bit complex, but sometimes there are things that are just simple, right? My, if I going through a triage and I wrote a ticket that is not clear enough, mm -hmm. but I know how to fix it, I could, or wait for engin the engineer and say, oh, well, you fix it when you have the time because you know it's better. Or if I know how to do it, okay, you know what? I just do this thing, it will take me 10 minutes and the ticket is ready for you to pick up in, in a couple of days. Yeah. So I don't have to wait for you to have those 10 minutes for this thing, exactly. which is essentially a thing that I, I really want to get it done. So, <laughs> you know, look for those opportunities to collaborate, to help people, to take um, burden out of their shoulders if this is not a burden for you and they will be happier to to collaborate with you as well. Yeah, this also comes with being a great professional and a nice person. 
had to add to that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, being you have to be nice to people. Uh, don't yeah at all times. I, I know we end up being very transactional on on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You know, especially because we all have limited time. We all have too many things happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. But building a bit of that relationship to not be a hundred percent transactional, it will really help you to move things forward because people will be happy to work with you mm -hmm. and not just get rid of a task that is uh, sitting on their lap. I second this from personal experience. So definitely. So to all who want to work uh, in house or even at an agency, um, in products or project management, be nice, be collaborative because things will be easier from a personal perspective, but also from a professional perspective. Um, it gives um, you more visibility and more opportunities when you open communication ways, I think. Um, so lastly, for someone who wants to improve on their skill set as a project product manager or who wants to start, uh, what kind of education, what kind of courses would you recommend? Yeah, uh, I tried to do some courses on project management and I found them very boring. I <laughs> realized at some point that I was just doing to your to click on a task that it was done, but I wasn't really learning from it. So I just gave up in the middle, but on products, I'm, there are two platforms that I really like. One is Reforge. Uh, it is pricey, but you get, I think a yearly membership and you can do tons of courses. They are very in depth and very long, mm -hmm. but if you want to try a shorter one that is free, Pendo and mind the product has one uh, course they released uh, not long ago called the uh, product management basics. And I'm actually going through this course right now. And mm -hmm. I do there, I think there are a few things that I did not have a visibility or an understanding or things that I, I was already doing, but didn't know that there was a name for it. So it is coming, it's becoming very interesting to kind of have a clear picture on, on, on a few things that, that I do and put a name behind the process that I do, right? So uh, let's say writing PRDs and finding ideas. For me, it was just, oh, this is the moment that I'm trying to find ideas. You actually call this uh, discovery. So I can come up now and if I'm talking with, with other product managers and say, oh, I'm on the discovery phase about these things. And then that language becomes a lot better, right? Because they, they know instantly what I'm talking about mm -hmm. and you can quickly move into uh, the, the next things you have to do. So I would say those two uh, are very good. Uh, Adam Gent has a great newsletter called yeah. the SEO Sprint. That is a very good place to start as well. Uh, it, it's very in-depth, so it will take some time. Um, I think he sends on Mon Mondays or Fridays, I'm not sure um, anymore because it has two different ones, but do uh, make yourself yeah. a coffee and sit, you know, you, you can easily spend half an hour going through that, but it has a lot of knowledge there as well. Yeah, yes, there is actually very in depth and also from a very experienced man. So actually, so uh, that is a resource that I personally recommend to you. So, um, so thank you very much for all your insights and knowledge on this. I would like to finish this conversation to just by just by getting to know a little bit more about you. What do you do to switch off when you are not running projects? Uh, you're probably running after your little one, <laughs> but uh, what else do you like to do? Yeah, I would say. I try to go, I used to go a lot to concerts. I can't go uh, as much anymore. I've been doing some house projects recently. We moved in a few months ago and over the last two weeks, if I'm not on the computer, I am actually with a shelf in my hands and getting some, some soil out of, uh, out of my back garden, <laughs> um, which, you know, it's a, oh, I'm like a city boy and never did this kind of work. So it's kind of fun to discover something new and take care of your property and mm -hmm. what else i try to to travel as much as i can um go to a few seo conferences i watch my football team in brazil palmeiras uh, as often as i can as well which means sometimes 
that I wake up at uh, 2 or 3 a.m. to catch the final minutes of a match if it's something important, and which kind of comes in handy with having a team that is in a, in a different time zone because if I'm not on my best self at 7 a.m., that's okay. I can sleep until 9 because I'm going to work until 6 or 7 p.m. anyway. And so, yeah, that's that's what I do in my free time now. You can approach some of these things as a little project, particularly the garden bed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, everything. If we, we take everything as a project now. We're like, okay, this month we're going to do the garden. This month we're going to do this. And, you know, you you get to, to do something from start to end, appreciate that, and then you go to the next one. <laughs> Definitely. So thank you so much, Gus, for your um, for your time, for your insights. Please, everyone, catch Gus Pelogia at Brighton SEO, where he will be talking about project management for SEO, project and product management for SEO, and the importance of learning about this and applying it to our day-to-day -day work. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, Gus. Bye-bye. Thank you, uh, Monse, for inviting me. And thank you, everyone, for, for watching. Uh, if I can help you anyway, just reach out to me and we'll, we'll be in touch. Bye. Bye.